my name is Gayla Bartlett, and I am so excited to be here for our next episode of Lead On, where we talk to community leaders that are out and about in our community doing wonderful and amazing things. So excited to have Danvers President Sally Kearns with me today, our state representative. Sally, welcome. Thank you, Gayla. Always a pleasure to see you, to bask in your sparkliness, <laughs> and uh, thank you for the opportunity, actually, to kind of check in with people Absolutely. one year in. How's when that going? It's going well. Um, yeah, it's going very well, very, very busy. So many changes, you know, from my prior I was stint. Say, this is your second stint, right? It's my second stint, yep. And so the remote nature of the work is a major difference. Social media is a, is a major difference. How we get our news, mm -hmm. how we communicate with people. Um, but it's been, it's been great. It's wonderful to be back with, you know, all of these issues. There are people, by the way, still, particularly in the uh, human services sector, who were there, uh, who I've come back, and Deb Harris still, still advocating there. for oh. mass law reform and um, the ARC community. So it's kind of neat. Yeah. That's great. So your first time that you ran and you won was back in, you said, 1990s? Yes, 1991. I wow. was sworn in. Yes, 1990 was a um, big change year. There were And there were many women who lost, which was a big disappointment. I think Pat Fierro of Gloucester, hmm. Fran Alexander, who was a powerhouse from Beverly. Uh, she was wonderful. So I didn't have the pleasure or honor of working with those women, serving mm -hmm. with those women, but uh, because of my activism in women's issues, I still knew of them. Right. But yeah, so, and now you and I were just talking, um, the and number of women has gone up a bit, Yep. Um, but we're still not fully reflective of the population at right. large. I think it's at 21% or so, but now, for instance, in, back then, there was a women's caucus. Mm -hmm. It it was women. We would meet. We would discuss issues. A big issue that we all agreed on was, um, you know, Republican, Democrat, pro-choice. We were all pro-choice. Yep. So that was a, an area of focus. And it was also a lot about how to navigate the very male culture right. of the state house. Now, in the intervening years, they are now very formalized. And they have an executive director wow. and a board, and they really function as a like a 501c3. Mm -hmm. uh, so big changes there, lots of lots of advancement. Right. Yeah. And so what's wonderful is that now you are in again. This is your and it's great. It is. And and today you and I were talking. We're excited. There's a female. As a woman mayor of Boston. Very exciting. So, woman so of exciting. color. Right. Thirty four. Woman of color. Asian American, um, yeah, a first, so many firsts, um, yeah, first, first mom, first woman, first mom with two children, um, Asian American woman, and she's going to be tremendous right. for the city of Boston. Um, and even locally, a lot of women were mm -hmm. elected. There have been two new members of the Peabody City Council, um, uh, Stephanie Peach in Ward 3 and Julie Daigle in Ward 4. Mm -hmm. And um, in Beverly, a woman named Hannah Bowen, first time candidate, um, volunteered on my campaign, I'm happy to right. say. Uh, might have taken a little bit of inspiration from the past, uh, actually it was a year ago yesterday. Wow. That my election was a year ago yesterday. It's great. In the middle of the pandemic, crazy. Um, so it's nice to see the face of government reflecting the population. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, more people of color, more women. So we're getting there. It's great. Yeah. I think one of the questions, and I know I have, so you're a state representative, what does a day look like in the life of Sally? I mean, what is a typical day? I mean, because, you know, if we follow you on Facebook, there you have office hours where you're at different locations that you serve. So what does a typical day or a typical week look like for you? So it depends on the time frame of what's happening. Uh, in the legislature itself. So last week we were working on the ARPA funding, you know, our share of the federal ARPA, American Rescue Plan Act, mm -hmm. uh, which is pandemic response to help communities respond, build back, particular, 
particularly um, communities that were disproportionately impacted mm. by the pandemic. So places like um, Lowell, Lawrence, uh, Holyoke, Pittsfield, places where um, there were just tremendous job losses. There were tremendous um, disruptions in people's ability to get health care. Mm. So that was a major focus. Um, and But it was all hands on deck. There were, I think, a thousand amendments offered to this bill. Uh, it's a three billion dollar um, package and now it will go to the Senate. It included 500 million dollars of state surplus money as mm. well, which to give you context, when I ran uh, last year, when I announced after Ted said he wasn't running, I thought, boy, this is going to be a rough time Yeah, in state government. I imagined a very different scenario than what we have now. I thought it would be fiscal Armageddon. And because of federal help, because of all of those measures that were taken largely on the federal level, pandemic assistance, that didn't come to pass. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's kind of a sad commentary that the economy did so well in the midst of such devastation and loss. And I think it says something about income inequality. Um, be that as it may, the state does have a surplus. So we were able to add that, put some away to save. Um, we have four years to appropriate the ARPA money and six to spend it. So all by way of saying, that took up time over the past few months. You know, each member was asked to meet with the chair of the Bonding and Capital Expenditure wow. Committee. Uh, we were asked to compile, you know, information for the Ways and Means staff and chair. So last week, it was very much focused there. But throughout, uh, a typical week might be meeting with, uh, on Zoom, with the residents of Woodvale um, and up near Thorpe Circle, um, people who are justifiably very frustrated, very frustrated with Beverly Airport mm. and our inability to get them to reduce these touch and go operations. Um, our town representative on that board, um, Matt Moser, is working very hard with Christina Hinkman, mm -hmm. who lives um, in Woodvale, and she's very close to the airport. Um, a woman named um, Elizabeth Graham. Um, I'm going to forget some names, uh, but a nice guy from Wenham. And Scott DeLay, who's the airport commission chair, mm -mm. who took the Danvers complaints very seriously. Good. So they are still meeting. Senator Joan Lovely, who's been wonderful, and I join those meetings. We're doing what we can, um, and it's, it's frustrating. But we're, we're still at it. You just have to know when you go into state government, things don't happen quickly. Right. There's 160 members to vet every, every bill. You have to move a lot of people. You have to, you know, you can't just get something on your own. You've got to work with others, build some coalitions of support. Right. Um, so then I might be also on the phone with our town manager or um, the mayor of Peabody about various issues. One is um, the Logan Express bus has been discontinued. Oh, no. The one that, one, yep, really? Uh, yep. That uh, was like the easiest way to. It was great. Their ridership, what they told us when they um, stopped it, and Tom Walsh, also a great partner, um, and area legislators, Brad Hill, before he left, all of us were appealing to Massport saying, hey, this is something we're hearing about. Yeah. So their hope was, they said, we hear you, but we don't have the ridership to justify that location okay. and that expense, but we're willing to move it. So there's a process going on now where maybe it will be moved over to the North Shore Mall if they can oh. work out. So we'll still have something. But these things take time. It's meetings. I've been in several um, conversations with Mass Highway Department mm. on a number of issues for us. Route 62 and 35 where they meet 128. Lots of issues there. Um, people who want sound walls. Yeah. Um, so lots of quality of life issues and that's and the bus routes, which is kind of a pet peeve of mine. 
and still trying to get the MBTA to work with us to improve. They took the bus out of Danvers Square, and yep. I just recently wrote to the general manager and said, this is not helpful. This is not correcting the problem of large empty buses right. that don't serve Danvers. So please restore that, um, and I'm going to keep at it. Good. Um, and, you know, David Lane and the Traffic Advisory Committee have been helpful. Good. And again, it, it's, you have to work it with people. You can't, you can't just do it solo. And so, um, and then yesterday I went to visit a nice young guy in his 20s. Um, we had a great visit, and he's um, living in a nursing home where he should not be. And so uh, we went, and I had a nice visit, and I said, gee, would you like to get, would you like to go get a coffee? And he said, sure. So we did. And um, he's in his early 20s, and I have some, I have two kids, you know, yeah. 22, 26, so I get it. And I said, well, do you want to go get something to eat while we're out? And, um, and then late, this af late yesterday afternoon after I dropped him off, I called the Secretary of Human Services. A nursing home at 20. At nursing home at 24. That's ridiculous. Because he has cerebral palsy. But a nursing home. Nursing home. Shouldn't there so with, inappropriate. With all, yeah. So inappropriate. And has got to um, be someplace else. Well, that's the idea. And so I called Mary Lou Sutters on her cell phone and Good. said, you have to help. And she was outraged. Yeah. So those kinds of things. Um, a typical week also has been just a steady drumbeat of people who need help with the Department of Unemployment mm -hmm. Assistance. A lot of our work, my terrific aide, Catherine McGee, who has been fielding those, and she'll interact and has developed those relationships. But people have needed help. They need help navigating bureaucracy, whether yep. it's to get their unemployment, which they deserve. I can't tell you how many people seem to feel a little bit badly about asking for help. Mm. And I'll say to them, you know, there is a reason we have unemployment yep. assistance. This is a, a, a safety net. Please don't feel that you don't deserve it. Right, um, you fade into it. Yeah, that's that's why it's there. And so, and also, directing people. We try to direct people. Go go talk to Maureen Howlett or Pam Parkinson at the senior center or and the food pantry if you're mm -hmm. having help. Know that if you're having a, a hard time, and know that there is help out there. So, Absolutely. by the way, a big focus of the pandemic assistance. ARPA funding is food and housing insecurity. Big, big problem. Mm -hmm. Increasing numbers of yep. people struggling. And then another focus is behavioral mental health. Good. Yep. Um, we all know, we've read it, we probably yep. know people. I think we all know someone mm -hmm. who needs to be talking to a therapist and is having a very hard time finding right. one. So now I think the challenge is we've appro well, we haven't quite appropriated it. We've done it. Now the Senate will do their version. They're a little bit different, but the overall focus is the same. Right. Building back, you know, restoring, helping our small businesses, mm -hmm. uh, getting a pipeline of trained, licensed mental health workers. Right, and I think that's, you know, being in the Kiwanis world and, you know, doing what I do for a living is seeing the kids affected by COVID. So. There were so many kids that had anxiety issues prior, right. but now it has just come out threefold. I mean, fourfold. They're everywhere, and these poor kids are just crying for help. And then, like I talked to you before, the fact that they stay in the emergency rooms for so long to get a bed in a hospital to help them. And then they get into these hospitals, and they're not necessarily the best thing for them to even be in because they can't get that therapist. Uh, so true. I went to see uh, the new president of um, Beth Israel Leahy, mm -hmm what we all affectionately call Beverly Hospital. Mm -hmm. um, Tom Sands, who's a wonderful, wonderful guy and very concerned. And we talked about this. They, the term for it is emergency department boarding, which I feel is a troubling euphemism. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the questions that I asked recently on a Zoom with the, um, it was the American Mental Health or Associated Mental Health Providers. Um, Donna Mosh is the name of the person I remember. And I, I asked, what um, do we tell, what do you tell a family right. when they come in? Do they know it will be two or three days? 
or, or longer, and you just can't convince me or you or anyone that that's an okay response. Right. So, and, and yet they have beds that they can't get staffed. And a big, one of the problems is um, that providers don't want to have to hassle and fight with MassHealth yep. or insurance companies to get reimbursed. So there are avenues of addressing this. Some of it's bureaucracy, some of it is getting workforce development, and some of it is, frankly, some good coordination and communication. You'd get right in there, <laughs> Gaylor, and you'd say, okay, who's talking to whom? Right. So um, that is a big focus. There's a senator, well, Senator Lovely is really involved in it, and then Senator Cid Cindy Friedman from Arlington is um, also very focused on it. So th there are eyes on it, It's but it's getting the dollars now yep. to the right places and the regulatory and policy changes that have to take place. So, yeah, it's That's never dull. No, um, and how many towns and cities do you do you cover? Because I think you said it did it get rezoned or? Well, it's in the process. Process, yes. okay. So right now, the 13th Essex District is Danvers, Peabody Ward 6, and one precinct of five two of uh, ward five so five two and six and half of middleton which is precinct two now the changes that are coming middleton got bigger so they will now have um i think i have now if i, I will if i'm fortunate enough to be reelected. i don't want to be presumptuous but the 13th district will include um, about a third of the middleton population because they're going to make, I think, a third precinct. Wow. Yeah, they're going to get a third precinct. Yep. Uh, then half of Topsfield is added to the 13th and half of Wenham wow. is added to the 13th, which, um, you know, I, I think is a wonderful mix. People in Wenham are very justifiably upset that they are, quote, divided. And Danvers was a divided district in 1977, and we were furious. So mm. I do understand. <clears throat> At the same time, I tuned in and listened to the uh, redistricting committee. And their challenge is that constitutionally, every 10 years, they have to come up with 160 legislative districts that are of same population within 5% oh. um, plus or minus. So in Peabody, the 12th district had to gain. Well, so they added some of, uh, they took Precinct 2 of Ward 5 and added that to the 12th. Then they had to take a little bit of uh, Precinct 3 mm. um, of Ward 5 and put that in the 13th because to do it any other way oh my goodness. would have put the 12th <laughs> over the 146,300 and whatever. Wow. So it's tricky. And yeah. it's kind of like, um, it's like smoothing a Like a big math a equation. And there, what, what you do is, is, you know, you create a wrinkle or like yep. a balloon where you squeeze one area. And yep. the population was moving from Western Mass eastward. And you can't, you know, if you're on the New Hampshire border. Yeah. You can't go any further. So they right. had a tall order, to, and, and I think they did overall a good job. I do understand that Wenham is upset, and I, I did have a nice letter from uh, a couple, and I said, I, I do appreciate your upset. I can tell you that as someone who shares uh, two communities, I share with Tom Walsh in Peabody, and I share with Brad Jones, who's a Republican, uh, in Middleton. He has North Reading but he also has Middleton. Mm -hmm. um, we work really well together because that is the job of a state representative. Republican, Democrat, not so important. Uh, w when you're servicing your district, it's your job to hear your constituents, to go to bat for them, to work with your local officials. So, um, and if you're not doing that, you won't be reelected. Right. You know, you just won't be. Um, so there's that. I hope that they are somewhat, you know, in, uh, what? I hope that their fears are alleviated mm. somewhat. And then the other part of that will be represented by the Beverly State Rep. 
So, yeah, there are changes. Uh, no changes to Danvers, I'm happy to say. That's a good thing. And that is a good thing. Um, so we go forward. and That's great. And now uh, the Senate, again, so there will be a final a final bill. Um, but our, our work is done in the House, and um, we'll see. Have you been able to go into the House, or is this all done Zoom? Very, right now. very, uh, we vote remotely. Okay. Um, I have gone in. You, you, they'll, you can go in. Uh, they don't like it. They don't <laughs> want the chamber full mm. because of, I, there are members who aren't vaccinated. Okay. They're not saying who they are. But I understand their concerns, right? You don't want to be. So you, can, you don't want to be mixing like that. There have been cases. So I don't, I don't. I go in, uh, I went in for one of my f uh, financial services hearings. I have five committees, I really have six because I'm also on an interagency task force on um, drinking water and forever chemicals in wow. the drinking water. Yeah. And um, I feel sometimes like I'm in chemistry class, um, but it's been really interesting. And um, so occasionally, that's been fully remote. Occasionally if there is a, I've gone in once or twice for a committee hearing. And I do prefer to be there with people, yeah. to be able to say to the chair or the vice chair, what about this? What about that? Um, I'm someone in a hearing. I like to ask questions. Mm -hmm. I do. And I know people, you know, they have to keep it to a three-minute limit. So if there's a long list of people testifying, I keep my questions brief. But I do ask uh, because I want to know. Good. Um, yeah. So you're so busy, though. I so mean, <laughs> and so I'm listening busy. to all the other committees they have you on and everything you're doing. So I think one of the biggest things COVID has taught us is that there's got to be a your work-life balance. So when does Sally get time to be Sally? So we're just making sound sure that like you... sound like my kids. I'm sorry. So Nora said to me, my daughter Nora said, <laughs> I think you need a hobby that doesn't involve politics. I was like, noted. And my, <laughs> my son just said, Mom, you have to find a balance because yeah. I do tend to get to so you yeah. don't burn out, right? Right, right. So, um, you know, we went to Parents Weekend. We drove down. Good. To, yeah, well, that was fun. And um, I do try to be mindful. It's really all mindfulness. So around right. 6 o'clock, I'll say, I need to do something about dinner. Yep. I can't really truthfully say that I cook it anymore. Mm -hmm. I do do something about it. I procure it. Me too, because I burn things. <laughs> so we really don't want me in the kitchen doing anything. <laughs> so I try. I do try. I try. Yeah, um, it's tough. I'm going to join Kiwanis. I know. I'm so That'll excited. That will be fun. Everybody hear this? <laughs> I'm so excited about that. That will be fun. I always, that will you know, give you a service outlet so that, you know, you'll still be in the community. I will still be, be doing your hands-on service projects. And there have been, you know, wonderful. I think of Kiwanis. I think of Anna Bertini mm -hmm. and Trudy Cullen. And they would say over the years, you know, why, why don't you join? Well, for a long time, I thought you had to be a business owner. Right, really which you don't. That, right? Which you don't. And so now I'm unencumbered in terms of kids. Um, that worked out okay. They're, they're kind of done. Um, and so I have some time. It's great. Uh, so I'm looking forward. And you're so sparkly. Who can resist Gayla Bartlett? Oh, thank you. Nobody. We're just excited to have you be a member of Kiwanis. We'll get that rolling for you. That'll be great. You know, the... One of the things I learned when I stepped away from political office, I joined the board at Citizens Inn. Uh, so it was at the time Citizens for Adequate Housing, now right. Citizens Inn. The, the work that goes on right. in our towns and cities by, and Peabody Rotary. Everybody. A phenomenal Amazing. organization. Danvers has Rotary as well. I know mm -hmm. that they do some great work. These service clubs and nonprofits really are vital vital um, because they bring the community to mm -hmm. community and um, so it's fun to get to know them all and um, so Corey Jackson and I started on the board together at Citizens Inn mm -hmm. and he's now executive director at Which Citizens Inn. Which is great Inn, yeah. And uh, I think still president of Rotary. Maybe it's a new term. I, I'm not, I know our one is year starts October 1st, so I'm okay. not sure when they start. So maybe, yep, maybe. Uh, and in fact, tonight, and then there's a wonderful Peabody Chamber of Commerce. Yep. Um, I would. I know that, I think Danvers is part of... The North Shore Chamber. No, they're not. The Beverly Chamber. The Beverly think. Chamber. Yep. And so I think it would be great for, I'm kind of hoping that there'd be maybe a, 
uh, renewal of the Danvers Downtown group or some kind of, because I, these groups are wonderful. They Absolutely. convene us. They, mm -hmm. it's, it's been really valuable. Yeah, and I look forward to getting to know or getting back. You know, I used to represent Topsfield. Topsfield was part of right. the 13th back when. Um, and they're doing some neat work uh, in their downtown area. And, um, and Wenham, I think of their swamp walk. I don't mm. know. Well, I do. I used to spend a lot of time, as I'm sure you did, over at the Wenham Museum. Yep. Uh, and, of course, the Wenham Tea House. So cute. And it's back. I know. So excited. So, yes, lots of great work going on. Lots of thank you to Kiwanis for everything that you're doing. I know that you're working on domestic violence yep. um, and children's well-being. And mental health awareness. And yep. mental health awareness. Uh, top, top priorities. So we've got to get you into a discussion about North Shore behavioral health mm. and coordinating it and bringing, you know, Danvers Cares and all of these groups we need to talk we can with each we'll other. have to get them together that could be another episode david you're listening david that'll be a round table discussion <laughs> my producer Great. david is in there going oh, okay gala <laughs> <laughs> never a dull moment never a gala. dull moment we always something brewing no but i'd like to thank you so much for taking your time to be with us today i've learned a lot about you and and what your day looks like because i know that was like i always see you out and about i'm like how is she juggling all of that same so. as you're doing but yep. um Yes. Uh, no. Thank you. It's, it's, Thank you so much. We're so blessed to have you as our state representative. And you're so active in Danvers and in the communities that you serve. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Gayla. Thanks so much. Thank um, you. Great friendship. Glad to know you. Glad Absolutely. to be here. Absolutely. The same. So make sure you join us next time on Lead On as we'll talk to some new and other community leaders out and about doing wonderful things in our community. Until next time, Danvers, have a great day.